Hello again. Um, the sun has been shining. It has been just insane weather and um, I hope <laughs> that you've had put lots of sun cream on. I made a big mistake in Sunday and put less on. So hopefully I'm not uh, a big red lobster as you're watching this. But it's been crazy weather and it's been kind of, uh, we've been sort of blessed with really good weather over this whole pandemic, uh, which has been one of the highlights, one of the positives anyway. We, Abraham has died um, and we're now moving into the story of Isaac, his son. And that really leads us quite quickly into the story of Jacob, who would be um, Abraham's grandson and the son of Isaac. But So I want us to read in Genesis 20, 25 and we're going to read uh, from verse 21 just through to verse 24. So Genesis chapter 25 and verse 21. I'm reading from the NAV today. So... It says this, Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, Rebekah, because she was barren. That means that she couldn't have a child. And the Lord answered his prayer and his wife, Rebekah, became pregnant. And the babies jostled each other within her. And she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from, who, from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger. And when the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. Um, it's strange how history has repeated itself here. Uh, very quickly we see here that Isaac and his wife Rebecca have the same problem that Abraham and Sarah had in that they couldn't have children. But we see here that Isaac is very, very faithful. He, he really follows the Lord. And what does he do? He takes his problem to God. He prays about it. He talks to God about it. And I suppose I want to start here today just, just to encourage you that if you're a Christian, regardless of your age, and you're maybe struggling in your faith, maybe there's something going on that you feel that you can't talk to anybody about. Maybe you feel embarrassed about it. Maybe you think that your problem is so small that God doesn't care. Listen, I would just want to encourage you that if you're a Christian, then one of the privileges that you have is that you can bring anything to God in prayer. That you can talk to him, simply talk to him about it. You can go to a quiet place, you can go for a walk. It doesn't matter where you are, you can talk to God about it. So don't feel that you are alone. You're not alone. God promises that he will never ever leave you, that he will never forsake you. That if our God is for us, then who could be against us? And that doesn't lessen your problem. But what it does, it does encourage you to, I hope it encourages you just to realise that you can bring anything to him in prayer. So don't feel alone, please. That's what Isaac does here. He prays about his problem. This is a real problem. It's a problem in their marriage. It's a difficulty that they're facing. And so Isaac's response is to pray about it. And we read that God hears. God always hears our prayers. He may not always answer our prayers the way that we hope for. But in, Isaac was praying for a child. God blesses him and his wife Rebecca with twins. A double blessing. But quite quickly we see here that the that the, the two babies inside Rebecca's womb are are jostling, they're fighting and Rebecca again, what does she do? She prays about it. She talks to her Lord, her God about it. We see this example of our need to pray about everything. But we see that what happens is that God chooses one of them to carry on the covenant or the special promise that he had made to Abraham. And even though it was a custom of the day, um, here in Bible times and maybe even today in places, that the oldest son would be the natural leader, that he would receive the blessing, that he would receive the inheritance. Not here in this case. In this instance, God is going to choose the younger son to carry on this special promise. He's going to choose Jacob, not his older brother Esau. And it's not because Jacob is special in any way. It's not because Jacob uh, deserves it more than Esau. It's not because Jacob is faithful. It's not because he's a good man. In fact, as we read about Jacob in his early life, he was really well named. He was His name meant to deceive. He tricks his brother out of his inheritance, out of his blessing. He's not a particularly nice person. But this is who God chooses to, to carry on this special promise. Why? Because it shows us that it's all about God. That God is sovereign. In other words, God is in control. And that can reassure us. 
to know that whatever difficulty we face, that God is in control. We have to learn that our ways aren't God's ways, nor are our thoughts God's thoughts, but that his ways and the thoughts are perfect. And it also shows us that salvation ultimately doesn't depend upon us. It doesn't depend upon human decision or intervention. That salvation belongs to the Lord. And so maybe you think that you're a good person, and you probably are a good good person. You're generous, you're kind, you're loving, you're caring, you work hard, you're a good son and daughter, you're a good brother or sister, you're a good friend. But in the Bible, in Romans 3 and 23, tells us, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all fall short of God's perfect standard. He is holy, he is without sin. And we've got sin in our lives and it separates us from God. And we can live the best life that we can live. But it's not enough. We still fall short of God's standard. And that's why God made this promise that he would send a saviour. That he would send someone who would be able to rescue us from our sins. Jesus. Jesus is the way that we get to God the Father. He's the way that we have a relationship with God. He's the way that we escape the punishment that our sin really deserves. He's the way that we get to heaven. He's the way that we have real purpose. Jesus. And so this story shows us that God's ways aren't our ways, but that his ways are perfect. And it shows us that human intervention isn't enough. And it also shows us that, that salvation belongs to the Lord. It's not about our goodness. It's about God's grace and his mercy. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I just want to thank you that your ways are perfect. And that, Father, that you are, um, that you're always looking out for us. And we see that through the cross. We see that you love us so much that you allowed your son Jesus to die for us on the cross. He gave us life for us so that we could have, um, have a relationship with you, Father. Father, that salvation isn't about us, about our goodness. It's all about you and what Jesus has done on the cross. And we also learn from this story that, that your ways are best, the Father. You choose the younger, that you go against tradition and custom because we have to learn that it's always about you, that you are God, that you are in control, that you are sovereign. I pray if there's anybody listening to this and they're struggling in their faith as Christians, that they realize that they can come to you at any time and pray, just as Isaac prayed, just as Rebecca prayed, that they can talk to you about it in prayer. I pray that they don't feel alone, that they know your presence. And I pray that there's somebody listening to this and they think that their goodness is enough to get them to heaven, that they'd realize that it's not. That if we can earn our way or buy our way or work our way to heaven, then Jesus died for nothing. But we know that he died because he is the way, the truth, and the life. That he's the way that we get to you, the Father. We thank you for your greatness. We thank you that you are in control, that you are sovereign. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.